welcome to our devotion this Monday morning and uh, glad that you could join us as we wrap up this whole story of Rahab and look at someone who God used and and the credentials of those that God uses seem to be very different from the credentials that one would uh, see in the world and we said that Rahab was very much uh, an unlikely hero of faith and we started looking at what what do you do in order to turn your life around in order to 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 change and in order to start over and we spoke about how uh, Paul says in 2 Corinthians 5 17 that we are new creations the old is gone the new has begun and so that was true of Rahab the old was gone the new had beca- begun as she became part of the the, the children of Israel and ultimately found her way into the genealogy of Jesus and we said in order to have that new beginning uh, God needs to give us a new name just like he did with Jacob who became Israel but secondly what we want to look at today is that God will give you a new purpose there are two details in the story that lead us to believe that Rahab was trying to find a very different purpose for her life to make something of her life and the first hint is given in verse 6 where we read that she was a seamstress and so we read uh, she had taken them up to the roof and hidden them under the stalks of flax she had laid out on the roof and so yeah she was a, a cloth maker or a seamstress and it seems that gathering flax to make cloth was a very tedious laborious process and it was very time consuming not the kind of thing that you you could do in your spare time in between selling your body on the street being a cloth maker was regarded as a respectable line of work which would mean that Rahab, Rahab had already begun to to pursue a more noble profession the second detail that makes us think that she was willing to change is when the spies wanted to escape she offered them a long length of scarlet rope to climb down the city walls from her window. Now in those days, dye was generally extracted from rocks by boiling them, but they had no way of transporting the liquid dye easily, so they would put a piece of rope into the dye to absorb it. And so cloth makers then would buy pieces of the rope to dye their clothes. So you would put your cloth into the boiling water, drop in a length of this dyed rope, and of course the color would transfer to the fabric a very small piece of rope could dye a large quantity of cloth it seems that Rahab had enough rope to reach the ground which is probably some 30 meters below so this cloth making enterprise of hers was clearly not just a little hobby it was a full-time operation could it be that God was already working in her life helping her to change so that she could fulfill he uh, her divine purpose and his well actually her purpose but also God's purpose for Israel and that is what again we refer to as provenient grace God is always working in our lives drawing us to himself and drawing us to his purpose in our lives what is also quite astounding for me is her understanding of who God is and and his power and authority and in verse Eight, uh, before the spies lay down for the night she went up on the roof and said to them I know that the Lord has given you this land and that a great fear of you has fallen on us that all who live in this country are melting in fear because of you and so here we're not quite sure where she acquired this knowledge but she feared God and we know that the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom according to Solomon we know also from Proverbs 14.1 that's a fool who says in his heart there is no God. And here is this, this pagan woman, this pagan harlot who, who, who has these first stirrings in her heart towards God. And that is, as we've said, is the, the beginnings of provenient grace. In verse 11 she says, For the Lord your God is the God in heaven above and on the earth below what incredible insight from someone who's who's not even part of God's people God had begun to prepare her heart and life for his will to be done in and through her in order to 
accomplish his purposes. And perhaps there's someone listening here this morning who's never really believed in God, but over these past few months, through perhaps even these devotions, you've come to realize that there must be more to life than this, that your heart is like Rahab, slowly starting to, to melt as you hear more and more about the goodness of God and the grace of God and the power of God and what He can do in your life. Rahab had two spies come into her home and she risked her life for them. Very literally, she could have been executed if she had been caught. And so this prostitute, this harlot, this, this hooker became, became in many ways not just the savior of these two spies, but the savior of all these other people as well. You ask, how so? Well, remember, when Rahab got to know God, she became a new person. And God gave her this new name, and she understood that. She knew that she had been transformed. She knew that, that she had been forgiven. And with her, her new name came a new purpose. And with a new purpose came, thirdly, a new future. And God did what nobody else would have thought possible. And that is bring a God-fearing man, whose name was Salmon, into her life. And she had a wonderful marriage with him. And nobody else would have even imagined that uh, when she was at the height of her prostitution. And so maybe right now, this morning, you're thinking, well, I'm never going to be whatever it is. And it's maybe always going to be this way with me. And there's this label that you find yourself continually living up to. Well, here's what God did through Rahab the prostitute who married this God-fearing man. She had a son and then a great-grandson and then a great-great-grandson. Then a great-great-great-grandson whose name happened to be Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the Son of God, born to take the sin of the world. Out of Rahab the prostitute came Jesus, the Savior of the world. And so I'd say to you, friend, this morning, don't let anybody put you in a box and put a label on it. You're not what anyone else says about you. By the power of Christ, you can get past your past. By the power of Christ, you can receive a new name. You're not what others called you. You're not what you call yourself. God will, will grant you a new purpose in life. You will grow into your name. And maybe you're not there yet, but you'll grow into it. He'll give you a new purpose. And as you grow into that, He will give you a new future. And you will be able to glorify Him in your weakness. The story of, of Rahab reminds us that we are never too far for God to reach and restore and for God to use for His greater purposes. And if God can use a harlot and change her heart and through it use her to change a nation and bring her into the community of His people and then place her in the genealogy of Jesus, surely He can do that with you. He can do that with me. He can do that with anyone. God sees the potential that is in you. Everyone looked at Rahab and, and saw a harlot, but God looked at her and saw a deliverer of his people. And so I pray that these words would encourage us and that we would recognize the, the kinds of credentials that God uses uh, in order to, to draw people to himself or to be used of him. They're not the, the credentials that, you would, that the world would use because we see this in Rahab and we see that in so many other uh, characters in Scripture. And so let's bow in a moment of prayer. Lord, we just thank you again for your word. We thank you that you give us a new name, that you give us a new purpose, and ultimately you give us a new future as we seek to follow you. And we thank you for Rahab and thank you for the, the amazing way that you changed her and used her for your glory to ultimately be, be in, the, in the genealogy of our Savior who, who brought uh, forgiveness and, and healing to the world. And so we just thank you for your word to us this morning. Thank you for this, this unlikely hero of faith. And may we be encouraged through her as we seek to, to follow you and to serve you and to be used by you. And so continue just to guide us in your ways, we pray. 
Uh, bless us into this day, into this week, and may our eyes just be fixed on you, Lord Jesus. We ask in your precious name. Amen. Amen. We'll bless you all. We have a great week, and uh, we trust uh, it'll be a good one. Bless you.